Hey guys, this is Adam Pareto. Welcome to our channel. Today we're going to learn how to do a watercolor painting from beginning to end. First, let's start off with the supplies you'll need to do your painting. A rag or a towel to clean or absorb any of the water you don't need to use. For brushes, I'm going to be using a size zero watercolor brush uh, from Princeton from Neptune with a round head for fine detail. A size two watercolor from Da Vinci. The Maestro version is made of Kolinsky hair. And Kolinsky hair is basically a Siberian weasel, which they make brushes out of their hair. Okay, well, moving on, let's go for the next brush. A Kuretake Zig Kolinsky hair menzo brush. It's a Japanese brush is really good to do fine detail as well for watercolors. And it's also made of Kolinsky hair. A size 10 silver black velvet, a medium sized brush. A size 16 round Princeton from Neptune. It's a bigger brush, and as you can tell, the bigger the number, the bigger the brush. A wide brush size 1 Princeton, also made by Neptune. I like using this one particularly for watercolor for the landscape, and it turns out really good. And your watercolors! Now for these, I don't remember what brand they were, because I got them way long time ago when I was going to college. One that I do recommend is Windsor and Newton. Those are really good watercolors, so try those out. Or for beginners like my friend who is watching this video and she wants to start doing watercolors on her own, I do recommend Prima Marketing or Reeves. Those are pretty good watercolors to start off with. If you want something a little more expensive, the Van Goghs, Daniel Smith, or Windsor and Newton. Two cups with water in them, one for clean water for a clean brush, and a dirty one if you're using the same colors multiple times. Today, I'll be doing a commission from Oregon of two puppies in watercolor. I drew the basic sketch lightly in pencil before I add all the watercolor. All right, let's get some music jamming and let's start our watercolor. The first thing I'm going to do is tape the entire edges of the paper to the desk to stabilize the paper as well as to control the water if it gets to the edges. The watercolor paper I'm using today is from Canson XL, 9 by 12 inches acid-free paper. Next, I add some scotch tape on the area I want to isolate from getting any water absorbed for my landscape. I add all the tape down on the paper that I needed. Now I use a regular ink pen to draw on the tape to cut away the parts I don't need with some scissors. And to be honest, this technique is very tedious takes a long time, so I want to show you later in the video a different technique using glue to do the same thing, which is to isolate the area we are not painting on. Okay, so the first thing I use is my white brush size 1 from Neptune. I get the background wet to absorb the water while I keep adding more and more layers of blue and more water to the sky. This technique is called wet and wet. Dun -da -da -da. It's a pretty basic technique. I keep adding more layers of blue and more water. To not wait for the paint to dry at this stage, I will use a blow dryer to speed up the process. It's kind of like cheating a little bit, but at the same time, right now, it's not a big deal. And that way I can add more layers to the blues as you're seeing right now in the video. My brush strokes are also moving from the right side of the paper to the left edge of the paper without lifting the brush. I do this so I can have one smooth stroke all across with no texture and gradually make the sky lighter at the base where the mountains are. Yes friends, glue. But not just any old glue. It's Windsor & Newton's watercolor glue colorless art medium. It's a removable liquid mask basically for paper. I'm going to be using this glue to do the same thing as the tape, which is to isolate the area I don't want the water to get to. So, to take out the glue out of the bottle, I'll be using a silicone tipped brush set from Medin. It's a pretty cheap brand that is used usually for fingernails or even pottery. I'll be using my 5mm tip to dip glue on. I like using the silicone tips instead of using an old brush to get the glue out. The reason why is because the glue doesn't get stuck easily to the silicone tips and you don't get any hairs on the glue that will be used on the paper, which makes it really nice. Once all the glue is added to the dry surface or the dry paper, 
and let it sit there for a couple hours and let it dry. You'll be able to notice when the glue is dry by the color. It becomes more yellow, the surface becomes hard. And then you'll be able to peel off all the glue off once you're ready. The next thing I'm going to be working on is doing the lake, which is around the puppies as well. That's why I isolated that specific area in the middle. And I'll be using the same technique again, a wet and wet. For this one, I'm going to be using a different color of blue. I'm going to go a little bit darker with it because the lake on the original reference photo was like that. So I'll try to imitate that as well with the watercolors and make it as dark as possible to give me more contrast between the sky and the lake. Once I'm happy with my lake, I want to also paint some more of the sky to give it a nice balance between the sky and the lake. That way the lake doesn't take up all the attention and both backgrounds are balanced out. Once the lake and the sky are dry, I will gently peel off with my fingernails some of the glue that has been sitting there. Now I have this nice area where I painted the lake and have nice clean edges where I'll be painting with different colors the puppies. As you can see, I'm now painting two different sets of mountains in, in the landscape. The more distant ones, I'm painting the darker green, and the ones closer to us are more yellow tinted color. The rule of thumb is to do the background or landscape first, especially as a beginning artist. The reason why is to avoid the problem of painting the subject first and then don't know what to do with the background. Also, you can have a better idea where you want the subject to be. While the surface is still wet, I'm going to be using ice cream salt from the brand Morton for this watercolor painting. I like using these bigger grains or rock salt instead of using kosher or table salt to give it a bigger, bolder texture on the rocky floor where the puppies are standing. I'll sprinkle the rock salt on my already wet wash so it can start to gather the watercolor pigments and concentrate them in one spot. I'll gently apply it with my hand and move the salt around with a brush, that way it doesn't flicker. The results will vary depending on the size, of course, and the uh, wet, the wetness of the paper. Uh, for beginners, I recommend to experiment on pieces of scrap watercolor paper first before doing it in your final piece. While I'm adding more rock salt, I'm also going to keep adding more water with yellow pigmentation so the salt has more water to gather together in that concentrated part where I'm adding the salt. So here you can see where I placed all the rock salts and they're just sitting there. I'm gonna wait a couple hours. I actually waited a whole day to let the watercolor pigmentation get absorbed by the rock salt. He just laid it all around on that surface area where the dirt is supposed to be. It was really fun to do this little part right here. And I'm sure if you guys try it out, you'll have a lot of fun as well. Okay, the next day passes by and now time to take off the salt. Again, I gently do it with my finger and my brush. As you can see, it left this cool grainy texture on the surface of the paper. The darker areas is where the big rock salt pieces stayed and got more of the pigmentation concentrated. Really happy with the results. The rock salt gave me the texture that I wanted. Now I'm going to work with it. The rock salt gave me the fun areas where I can manipulate the shadows with adding more watercolor pigments in darker tones. Keep adding the final details on the landscape, as well as using my smallest brushes to add more layers of shadows to the ground floor. Now that I got the ground floor all painted, it's time to paint the Boston Terrier. In watercolors, one of the traditions is to avoid painting in just black, to get the shadows, or in this case, to paint the black Boston Terrier. The reason is because watercolors are vibrant, happy colors, and instead of just using one plain boring color, it's always more unique and attractive to mix colors to get similar effect, such as black. For example, with this Boston Terrier, using my two smallest brushes, as well as my Japanese brush with a long tip, I'll be mixing blue, purple, brown, and a little bit of yellow here and there to get a similar color to black. For the Boston Terrier, I'm using almost exclusively the technique wet on dry. Pretty self-explanatory, but basically what it is, is I'm adding watercolors to a dry surface 
whether it's the first coating to the paper or another layer of color on his darker tones of his face. And for my beginning artists, again, practice it in a different uh, sheet of paper, adding that wet and dry technique. So that way you feel comfortable doing it in a separate page and then you could do it on your actual final piece. I did some small portions of flat washes but not enough to be emphasized in this video. If you guys want to learn more about flat washes or any other technique in watercolor, just let me know in the comments below. In the puppy, I'm trying to imitate the different lights hitting his face and his body, especially the reflection of the ground. Okay, I'm almost done finishing the final touches on Nike, and now we'll move forward and do the watercolor of the poodle, which will be really fun to do with a different technique. Another technique I'm using is watercolor pencils from Prismacolor. I'm going to draw using just a couple of colors, mostly dark brown, red, and a little bit yellow to do a quick sketch. And then I'll add water onto the lines that I made with the watercolor pencils. I did this technique to be able to manipulate the small details like his eyes and mouth, but for most of it, I'm just gonna be using my smaller brushes to do most of the fine details of his hair um, and also his necklace, his lips, all the little fine hairs there because he's really fluffy, he has really curly hair. So I'm mostly going to use the fine Japanese long tip brush to do those details. And I'm starting first with doing some yellow, some browns, imitating the reflection that it has from the ground. And also he had a little bit of the blonde color, a little bit of that gold color on his uh, hair. So that's what I'm doing here, slowly doing it. It does take a process because this is just going to be the basic um, hair and then I'll add more coatings of it the more I go. I am also aware of where my paint is going. I'm doing controlled brush strokes on the puppy's face and his body or in other words precise painting technique. This technique is about being aware what parts not to paint over or avoid the edges. I don't want the water to spread or blend into his fur. One watercolor paint I want to highlight for painting this poodle is going to be my Grumbusher Titanium White Watercolor Paint Series 1 W043. It's a professional level or artist grade. Just like other art mediums, watercolors have a student grade to an artist grade, which quality does differ from one to the other. Let me know in the comments below if you want to know what makes the difference between the two, and maybe I can make a video about that later. So in the meantime, what makes this watercolor paint so special, other than the fact that it's a white paint, it's how smooth the white paint goes on my paper. Really easy to make those fine details of his fur. I just add a little bit of water, a couple of drops in fact, to my white paint. A little bit lasts a long way. And as you can see, I am painting individual strokes of hair to make his fur as curly and as soft as possible with this paint. Done with the painting, just taking off the tape and it's done. Yay! Thanks for watching guys, the extensive edition of watercolor painting for beginners. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.